Hey, what's up, Shoot Talk? This is Eric from the Eric from Shoot Photography Blog. How to Shoot a Hasselblad, brought to you by Film Notes. Only guide you'll ever need to shoot film photography is pretty dope. Anyways, I want to introduce to you guys today the Hasselblad. So, big ups to my friend Euron Helmink. He, I essentially taught a workshop and he said, Hey, how about instead of paying you money, I'll give you a Hasselblad. And I said, yes, best decision of my life. So I'll tell you why I love this camera. So first of all, the great thing about the Hasselblad is it's like a big Lego camera. So it's modular, meaning I could just take apart the back. Hmm? Pretty cool. Also, nowadays you can even buy a digital sensor that just looks like this. And just stick it on top. Another thing. Boom. And this whole thing could actually be removable. So if I took this off, right, and I collapse this down here, this whole module here is removable. Pretty cool, right? Furthermore, you can even take off the lens, pushing in this little button here. Whoops. Took a photo. Oops, it's locked now. Oops, sorry about that. Put this back on. Put this back on. And if you want to unstuck the share button, you can just wind this again. So it's ready to get clicked again. So. Actually, I think I might have broke this camera. Uh -oh. Anyways, <laughs> let's go on with the show. So the cool thing with the Hasselblad is the lens, it goes from eighth of a second all the way to five hundredth of a second. And also you can adjust your aperture directly on front of the camera. And the really cool thing is you can see if you turn around the lens, in the back, it actually shows you the EV rating. So essentially what the EV rating is, if you're shooting film, it goes, you could, you could essentially look at the brightness of light and you could put a numerical value to it. So on some light meters, so this is the Seikonic, you could turn it on. I guess it's out of batteries. Anyways, usually when you use it, you push this little side button and based on this front orb, it'll show you the light and you could dial in you know, what kind of ISO you're using, you can use whatever aperture or shutter speed you're using, and it'll give you the correct exposure. And you could make it so, you know, you could say, okay, I'm shooting ISO 400 film, I'm shooting this at F8, what shutter speed do I want? And then you could use this little scroll wheel on the side to determine that. You can also switch it to the EV mode, so you can actually learn with your eyes, hmm, I'm out shooting and I'm shooting in the shade, that might be an EV of 10 or 15, whatever it may be. So I, to be frank, I don't actually really know EV very well, but I know a lot of film photographers or just photographers who prefer to use EV as a way to determine light. So the question is, what's so cool about a Hasselblad or why shoot with one? So the first thing is first, you could pop this open. And when you're making photos, you actually look down at it and you can see the whole world reflected backwards. It's actually pretty cool. And so a lot of people, when they're shooting with a Hasselblad, they hold the camera like this, and look down, and shoot it. So you can shoot like kind of more unique angles. And also the cool thing with shooting with a film Hasselblad is that the, um, the film is very big. Meaning, this is a roll of um, photos that Cindy actually shot. And you can see how big the film is, which means that there's more detail. And the benefit of shooting medium format film versus 35 millimeter film like this is that there's less grain and uh, often the skin tones look nicer. And so I think medium format is generally best for shooting portraits or shooting urban landscapes. So even if we look through all these images, I'm actually not sure what these are all photographs of, but if you hold this up to the light, 
you can essentially see the image is really big. Another pro tip is if you have an iPad, you can just set your iPad to a white background, full brightness, and you can actually put the film against the background and you can actually better see uh, the images. So essentially it's a getaway to use a light box. And when you're shooting with a Hasselblad, so shout out to Bellamy Hunt who makes these little sweet uh, medium format film casers. So that um, a roll of port portrait for under that Cindy already shot. I'm gonna put this in here, then here, so it's a little bit easier. This is a limited edition um, camerafilmphoto.com one, and Bell Me made in Japan. Anyways, so in terms of shooting film, I would actually recommend Kodak Portrait 400 for a color film. It is optimized for skin tones so that the skin will look a lot nicer. And for black and white, you know, Tri-X is usually a safe bet. And I, I'm not sure if Bellamy actually makes a JCH Street Pan 400 for medium format. He might be working on it. But anyways, support small guys. Kodak doesn't need any more of our money. But anyways, let me go back to the point. So when you're shooting with a Hasselblad, the most important thing is to reduce camera shake. So let's say you're shooting ISO 400 film. I would say always try to max out the shutter speed whenever possible at 500 a second. The reason is after you take a photo, the camera shakes a bit, which means you're more likely to get a, a blurry out of focus photo, which kind of sucks. Uh, and to be more precise, it's not a really out of focus issue, it's more of a blur image. So often when you're shooting film or medium format camera, you might not be sure if the photos are out of focus or blurry. So the best way to prevent your photos from not looking sharp is keep your ISO, shoot outdoors, fi ISO 500, let's say you're shooting at a thousand a second. Uh, sorry, ISO, um, ISO 400 film, keep the shutter speed at 500 of a second, and just change your aperture from F22 or 16. So you're more likely to have your photo that's not blurry. And also when you're shooting, do not shoot really, really close up. Shoot your subjects a little bit further away. The benefit of shooting with your your photos a little bit further away, you get more depth of field. So you can see as an example, um, if I pre-focus my lens to about seven meters, and I'm shooting at f22, everything from about three meters all the way to infinity is gonna be in focus. Whereas, if I'm shooting this like really close, let's say one meter away, everything from f22, at f22 it's only 0.9 meters all the way up to 1.2 meters is going to be in focus. So the biggest way you could make sure that your photos are in focus is do not shoot this at f2.8 if you're a beginner. Keep this at like f16 or 22. So you're, the, the two biggest issues you'll have shooting medium format is once again, the photos are blurry or they're out of focus. By shooting at a fast shutter speed like 500 a second and maxing out your aperture at f22 or 16, you're not gonna have these technical issues. And I, this is all advice I just wish somebody gave me. And um, some other practical tips when you're shooting with a Hasselblad. This thing here, you could rewind it, but to me it's kind of annoying. I just rather keep this in and just rewind it. Also, don't be afraid to shoot more than one photo of a scene. So, um, on six by six film, that means that the film is, you know, a square and don't just take one photo of the scene and move away. Take at least two or three when you're starting off because once again, you might have issues with the camera being shaky or blurry or whatnot. And if you're shooting with a Hasselblad, you'll get about 12 shots per roll of medium format film. So don't be afraid to experiment and just shoot a lot. So one of the best ways to learn more about medium format is just to, to shoot a lot. And in terms of a light meter, you don't need to buy a Siconic, just download a smartphone app, light meter app, and do it for free. And yeah, last thing is try to photograph things that are not moving. So shoot portraits of people, shoot urban landscapes, and yeah, just have fun with it. So once again, buy, 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 copy of film notes, good inspiration. And there's also, we have some sections on uh, shooting medium format film there. All right, peace out.